Good morning. Welcome to Wednesdays in the Word. It's June the 7th, 2023. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin here at Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. OurShepherd.net is the way to find us. And I've got a fish over my right shoulder. It's uh, one of the very few places that we have fish depicted here in the stained glass at Our Shepherd. And you can probably tell by the light behind it that it's not really the morning of the 7th, it's the evening of the 6th. I'm pre-recording this and I waited too long so there's not as much light behind it. But still, you can see it's a fish and the fish is important because as we go through 60 essential Bible stories, today we're talking about Jesus calling the first disciples. And of course, what he said to them ties in with the fish. Are you ready? The key verses from Luke chapter 5. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. So those are the key verses. This actually, uh, Matthew and Mark and Luke all have this account of Jesus calling uh, uh, Peter and Andrew and James and John. But interestingly, only Luke talks about the miracle of the enormous catch of fish. In Matthew and Mark, the account is, is far shorter, and it simply just says Jesus was passing by, and he walked up to Peter and said, come with me, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And so, uh, in both accounts in Matthew and Mark, it says uh, Peter and Andrew, James and John, they dropped what they, do, they were doing, uh, James and John left their father Zebedee, and off they went uh, to follow Jesus. Luke is the one where Jesus creates this incredible miracle where he preaches from Peter's boat and then he says, put your net over there and you'll make a catch. And Peter said, I've been out all night, Lord. I've been out all night. There's just no way that's going to happen. But in Luke, earlier on, Peter had already encountered Jesus and his miraculous actions. Peter had healed his sick mother-in-law. And so Peter, despite the fact that he was tired, despite the fact that he, as an experienced fisherman, said it's not going to happen, he did what Jesus asked him to do because he had seen Jesus in action. And sure enough, Jesus came through again and created this enormous miracle, this catch of fish. And then Jesus said, okay, now your life is going to change. So what does this mean for us? Well, you know, I, I made some notes. I'm going to look down uh, here and there. Um, I want to I want to think about what it's like when we encounter Jesus in His Word, when we encounter Jesus in the in the uh, in the miracles of baptism, in the miracle of Holy Communion, and what He then calls us to do. You think about Peter's reluctance. You think about Peter's complete. Um, well, he just he wasn't the kind of guy that you pictured would follow a rabbi, and certainly not one who would then take over a ministry. Peter was ill-equipped. He was ill-prepared. To me, that says Jesus will take us the way we are. And I've made some notes here. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful and interesting way to look at this. Um, throughout Scripture, we see that human sin and failure and inadequacy are no obstacles for God's calling. God calls sinners. God calls imperfect people to do his work. People who are aware of their unworthiness and often doubting and often resistant of the call. Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, many others, all proclaim themselves to be unworthy of the call. And Peter was one of them, right? After the miracle of the, the, the miraculous catch of fish, Peter got on his knees and he said to Jesus, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Jesus doesn't care. He meets us where we're at. He calls us to do his stuff, his work in the world, with all the sin that we carry around with us. And therefore, we know that when something amazing happens through something that we've done, we know it's not us. <laughs> we know it's the Holy Spirit at work in us and through it, through us, accomplishing the work that God has called us to do. How often do we resist? You know, my, my own story of feeling the call to ministry for most of 20 years and resisting and resisting. And finally, Jesus made it abundantly clear that there was no other choice, that I had to leave my previous life as an engineer 
and become a full-time pastor in his church. And what a glorious, glorious transformation that has been. Uh, and what I mean by that is I am blessed every single day to be called. But we're all called. And we're not all called to change our careers and our professions, but we're all called to work in God's kingdom and his fields with the talents and gifts that we have. And we do so in confidence, knowing that it's not us, right? But it's God working through us. Peter um, is just another example of someone who failed repeatedly, who denied Jesus right before he was crucified three times, and yet went on by God's grace and his power to become an amazing evangelist and a leader of the church. One interesting point that I wanted to make about this word uh, that Jesus used, from now on you'll be fishers of men. He used this word called uh, zagrin. Uh, it's a Greek word and it's, it's used very, um, very seldom in the Bible and it really means to catch alive. So when he said, I will make you fishers of men, he used this word zagrin, which means you'll catch to life. So there was a beautiful connection in that word between catching men and catching them for life. Not to kill them, but to raise them up to eternal life. So Jesus' mission does not wait <laughs> until we think we're ready. The need for the gospel in this world is far too urgent. We are called right now, right? Just like Peter and Andrew and James and John were called right at that moment. In spite of our frailty, our failures, our doubts, in the midst of our ordinary, busy, complicated lives, Jesus' word to Simon Peter is also the word for us as we consider the calling that we have to bring the gospel into the world. Jesus said, do not be afraid. And he says that to all of us, doesn't he, all the time. And he said that very, very often during his ministry. This is Jesus' mission. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. We follow Jesus through regular time in his word, through regular worship and receiving the sacrament, through encouragement from brothers and sisters in Christ. We follow Jesus by doing those things, and then he, by his power and grace, makes us fishers of men in this world. And we trust. We trust. And we also have no pressure. As Pastor Gerder has said, it's, it's a job that has the lowest pressure and the highest potential payback of any job in the world. He just says, go and tell people about me and I'll take care of the rest. So go, go, be fishers of men, follow Jesus and do so without fear because he's got us. So I'll include all three references to this story uh, in Luke chapter 5, in Matthew chapter 4, in Mark chapter 1. And you can, and the, really to read all three of these references will probably take you about five minutes, but you'll see the differences between the Matthew and Mark account and then the Luke account as well. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank and praise you that you have called us to be fishers of men and that you have promised your presence and your indwelling Holy Spirit so that we don't need to be afraid, Lord, but instead to simply go out and do the things you call us to do, trusting in your power, because we know, Lord, that on our own, we would most certainly mess it up. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to participate in the work that you are already doing in this world. We pray in thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace today and forever. Amen. Have a glorious day in the Lord and go, go catch some men and women for Christ.